Hello, welcome to Beacon Pines. My name is Usser. This is a game Taika just got for her birthday. She used her birthday money for it. I'm not really sure what it is. Anyway, take us away, Taika. Dear reader. Yes? Allow me to introduce you, to, though it might at first appear yes. like many books you've come across. It is far from ordinary. Okay. You may, therefore, have some misunderstandings about its nature. The story that awaits you has not been fully told. In fact, its conclusion is not yet known, even to myself. It is in that way that my book is special. It is in that way that you are special. Without you, there is no story. Typically. Chapter one. Normal isn't what it used to be. This is a story about change. Nestled okay. in a shallow valley is the town of Beacon Pines. Far from the town square, across the river, past the neglected welcome sign, a young boy walks alone at dawn. His name is Luca Van Horn, and like you, dear reader, he's here for a reason. To be entertained? His dad died. How am I supposed to know? You've played this. I haven't. Hey, Dad. How are things going? Today's the first day of summer vacation. I start middle school next year, I guess. That's like you! Yeah, except my dad isn't dead. I was six years old when you died. It's been six years now. Here on out, you'll have been gone longer than you were here. Feels like that should mean something. Mom always said that this tree was your favorite spot in the world. Me too. Hey, Luca. I knew I'd find you here. Rolo was Luca's closest friend. He possessed many fine qualities, but subtlety was not one of them. Well, after I banged on your door till your gran answered, after I checked the pond, and climbed to up the treehouse, then I knew I'd find you here. Rolo finally noticed the tears welling in his friend's eyes, and the flowers on the grave. Oh, yeah, right. You and your mom always did this on your dad's birthday. Yeah. Didn't know if you are going to keep doing it now that your mom's gone too. She's not gone. She's just missing. Sorry, I meant to say since she went missing. She's gonna come back, Rolo. Of course she is. Hey, Dad, see you next time. Well, this is sad. I think I'm ready to get out of here. Better lead the way. <laughs> Tickle. Wonderful! I had a good feeling about you from the moment you opened my book. That charm is a very special thing. Very special indeed. Keep hold of it. Charm? Huh? Okay. Its purpose Whatever. will reveal itself soon enough. <laughs> oh, yeah, I almost forgot. Or reason I was looking for you. Just wondering if you'd ever get to that. Found the perfect way to start our summer. How's that? Rolo looked to the side suspiciously. Not here. They might be watching. Shh, not so loud. We need to do this in a secure location. Mission control. Alright, I just have to tell Gran and then we can head out. What are you gonna tell her? I don't know, I'll think of something. It's all the same to you, I'll meet you at the welcome sign. Your gran still kind of wigs me out. I don't do well with new people. She moved in like half a year ago. Just meet me at the sign when you're done. Suit yourself, I won't be long. Tell gran before heading out with Rolo. What are you gonna tell her? Dear reader, forgive me for this interlude. Remember that charm you found in the dandelion patch? 
There are more of those special charms to discover throughout Beacon Pines. They've been known to reveal themselves to those who are willing. Some of them can be found in this very house. Ooh. Time to explore. Luca paused at his parents' bedroom door. He just wasn't ready to go in yet. Ah, but I want to see what's in there. Gran had commandeered the upstairs closet when she moved in. The closet? Mm -hmm. shelter from a young boy's mischief, she said. Hide. This way. I thought when they said she commandeered it that they meant that that's like where she was living now. Luca that tossed it. on his favorite that, old sweater. That's true. Oh my god, Grand, you gotta it's come out of the closet. Summer. A chill still hung in the air. <laughs> chill. That's Grand's bed. Grand's oh. bed was undisturbed. Luca didn't mind that she had a habit of falling asleep in front of the fireplace. It meant that he could read late into the night. Uh-huh. Grand's moving in meant that most of Luca's things had been crammed in the corner. Luca was somewhat annoyed by the situation. Yeah, it would be too. certain that you are the one I've been waiting for all these years. You'll recall I was a bit coy regarding the use of charms earlier. Excuse me, I tend to have a flair for the dramatic. You are about to encounter your first turning point. There are certain times in this tale when everything hinges on a single word. Step forth, dear reader. Okay. Where was step first? Don't screw up. There is no screw up to this part. Uh -oh. I go hang out with Rolo. Hold up now. Where are you and Rolo headed exactly? Oh no, we're special. You, the better for <coughs> everyone involved. We're just gonna go chill for the day. We're just gonna go chill for the day. The best lies are built on truth. Boys are always in a hurry to do nothing. We stick to what we're good at. Make sure you're done chilling in time for supper. Easy. Impressive. You've managed to navigate your first turning point without too much of a mess. That is the power of charms. A single word can change everything. I think it's time to introduce you to the Chronicle. What happens if you choose hide? That's exactly what the we're going to do. The Chronicle is a record of the decisions you've made. Okay. You can see the turning point which has been revealed. At any time, you can use the Chronicle to go back and invoke different charms, creating new branches. Luckily for us, this is the one and only turning point where the charms won't dramatically alter fate. See? No. Oh. It's the perfect opportunity to experiment with rewriting things. gonna go hide for the day. That sounds suspicious. Don't be suspicious. Don't be suspicious. Hide. hide. Only when one is trying to hide something, they avoid literally using the word hide. Yeah, yes. Oh, hold on. Okay. I had something I had to look at my phone. Aren't you a little old for that? I missed what they're old for. It's hide not like seek. there's much else to do around here. They're going to hide and seek. Okay, make sure you're done playing your little game in time for supper. All yeah, yeah. Well, that ends well. That one, not much change. Make sure you find all the I charms. Side to gardening, laid open on the bench. Wait, she's she's Extra a grand and she's got a beginner's guide. Yeah. She's. Wow. Oh, and Luca, and Rolo stay out of trouble. Okay, we won't. I know, I know. Get into trouble with Rolo. See, told you. Nice. No running in the house. These are soft. Hey. Come on, come on. Oh. Dang it, Rolo. Welcome to Beacon Park. few visitors, the welcome was perhaps more grand than necessary. Welcome to Beacon Pines. You know the drill. 
Don't let anyone discover our secret path. Is it the one with the big blue sign pointing towards the secret path? Chapter yes. Two. Welcome to Beacon Pine. For many years, this valley had been a small mining outpost. It wasn't until Sharper Valentine built his fertilizer company that Beacon Pines was established. Over the next 30 years, the town had grown and prospered until the foul harvest and his sudden death. In the six years since, everyone was simply trying to get by. The foul harvest. Oh no. Keep out! I don't think they want you to go in there. Chill Who turn on the radio? When the clouds were just right, the boys could tune into strange patterns of static. Rollo thinks it's aliens. He always thinks it's aliens. See? What's this top secret plan to start our summer? So you know the abandoned warehouse by my place? The old Valentine building? Yeah, well, it isn't abandoned. Makes you take that! Get this. Last night it was glowing. Are you sure? Kind of. <laughs> the place has been empty since. Since the foul harvest. Yeah. Who would even want to poke around that place? We would, Rollo. We would. Wait, wait, wait. It's just a busted old warehouse. I just meant we could do some research at the library. You want to actually go to the warehouse? What do you expect to find? Answers. My mom's out there somewhere. Seems like everyone wants to pretend that she's gone for good. You have to come, Rollo, if you don't want to. Luca, remember that time I sort of accidentally burned down the chicken coop? And you jumped in and said it was your fault before my paw throttled me? This is a flaming chicken coop sort of deal. I got your back. <laughs> Thanks, Rollo. Now that I think about it, poking around a decrepit fertilizer warehouse is exactly how I want to spend the first day of summer. Let's go! Okay. This way. Perennial harvest. I'm just catching my breath a bit. Go on, I'll catch up. Down the hall, the beacon, beacon. Uh oh. Coffee. <laughs> just the fellow I was looking for. Hey, Roxy, All what's right. up? Rendezvous with Roxy. This is an important turning point. Uh oh. The first time where your charms will change the course of fate. Yep. And currently, we only have one suitable charm in our disposal. Have no fear, we can always return later using the Chronicle once we find more charms. Well, now I'm just rambling. Where were we? You see my blockhead brother today? He skipped out before breakfast. Well, not really, no. Can't say I have. Can't or won't say. Roxy, would I lie to you? Yes? Luca, wait up! I almost forgot to tell you. Oh, you so caught. Roxy might be lurking around here. This is one of her favorite places to stand around and be useless. Rollo. So we need to make sure she doesn't spot us. Rollo? Why are you doing that turning thing with your body? What, you're not scared, are you? She's harmless. You're in the chump. And she's right around that corner, isn't she? But my me just over here lurking uselessly. Oh, hey, sis. Nice weather we're having, eh? <laughs> Couldn't help but notice she snuck out this morning before breakfast. Wasn't hungry. Also, couldn't help but notice your morning chores were left unchored. Roxy, I'm gonna level with you. I'm sick and tired of digging up carrots. We all gotta pick up the slack since the foul harvest. Almost every carrot I dig up is rotten. And the rest look like they were hit with Hank's Hank Automatic Shrinko Ray. All the more reason to keep on digging. 
gotta be more life than puny carrots. Look, Roxy, Luca and I have places to be, so if you don't mind... Well, I do mind. I'm not gonna catch hell again because of you. So either you march yourself home and harvest those carrots, or I'll haul you home myself. Rollo froze as Roxy took a step toward him, cracking her knuckles. Luca knew he had one chance to save his friend from being dragged home. Past he found the best way to was to be a little chill. In the past, he found the best way to deal with an enraged Roxy was to be a little chill. Oh, Roxy, it's the first day of summer. The sun's shining and we just want to take it easy. If it's the first day of summer, why is he wearing a sweater? I don't know. Let's leave tomorrow's problems for tomorrow. It's great and all, but Rolo problems have a way of becoming my problems. Paul always says, tomorrow's work is best left for yesterday. Aren't you, big oaf? Aw, oh, rats. I expect a full report about the Valentine place. A full report! Like, who is the squirrel who was listening in the entire time? Why didn't she help? Fitz. 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 What are you up to this lovely day? Nope. Cool, cool, cool. Wow. It's just nope. I should talk to Mr. Wilder before heading out. He might know something about the warehouse. Okay. You. Holden Wilder ran the local paper of record. The Beacon Beacon. Hey, Mr. Wilder. Morning, Luca. What's the day have in store for you? I wonder if you heard any news about news? Beacon Beacon knows the news that needs knowing. Any news about the old fertilizer warehouse? Nope. Oh. Rolo thought he saw some lights there last night. Rolo ought to be careful parking or poking around that part of town. Winds of change are blowing. And change is a dangerous animal. Uh... Okay. okay, that sounds kind of ominous. Harper Valentine, founder of the Beacon Pines. Never underestimate what a great man can do given time. A bit much, if you ask me. Yeah, I agree. Hey, Solomon. Apologies, no time for chit chat. Oh. Luca, my boy, hold up a tick. Hey, Mr. Duncreed, I was just on my way to... I just sold the last jar of your grandmother's preserves. Can't stock the shelves fast enough, turns out. That's great, but I'm actually... I guess Juniper will just have to swing by with more of her lovely jam. Uh-huh. Well, don't let this old man slow you down. You just remind her that she still owes me that dance. I promise Gran regretted the second it was made. Will do. She's a fine woman, that Juniper. Yeah, she's pretty cool, I guess. A real fine woman. Uh, gotta go! Sweeter than any jam on earth. Okay, you're just making this weird now. The path led into a small hollow at the edge of Weepwood. Okay, no turning back now. Gosh, an electrified fence. Yes, yeah, so don't touch it. Is that sign new? The fence thrummed with a gentle electric buzz. Luca what often would asked himself he what Rolla would do, so that he could rule out that option. I'm definitely not touching that thing. Yeah, crawl through it. It's broken. As no, sparks not. flew from the fence, the light atop that section shut off. Two bulbs remained. Yeah. Yeah. One That's more to two. go. Okay. The fence's buzzing gave way to silence. Mushrooms. A moment yeah. of truth. Seriously? <laughs> Long abandoned, the 
warehouse once served <gasps> as the industrial heart of Beacon Pines. <gasps> now, it stood only as a reminder of things left behind. The dormant building showed strange signs of life. So Rilla wasn't exaggerating for once. What's going on here? There was only one way to find out. Break into it. Kill everyone living there. No? The hose emitted a subtle sound. It was actively draining some kind of liquid. Poison. Locked. Lucas thought he heard faint Locked. sounds coming from the other side of the door. Put your ear against it. He pressed his ear against the cold He's got a big ear, better. so, yeah. A zipper? Footsteps? The sound of footsteps grew louder. Uh, run? Hello? Number 29. Shit. <laughs> the heavy steel door knocked him and he the dead. Ground. Disoriented, he looked up to see an imposing figure silhouetted in a green glow. It lunged toward him. He tried to scramble away, but felt a gloved hand latch onto his ankle. Luca watched his fingernails leave trails in the dirt as the hand slowly dragged him back through the door, into the lab, into the green light. This story is about change. This is a story about change. And he changed from alive to from dead. The sort of change Luca imagined for himself. But change is, after all, a dangerous animal. The end? I probably should have warned you about this. There are many paths that our story can take. Most will end in tragedy, but don't let that discourage you. Lovely. You will find the ending that this story deserves. I just know it. From here on out, a charm will have a check mark when it's been used to its full potential at a given turning point. Now, let's try something different. Uh. Really? Found the best way to do was to be a little shit. In the past, he found the best way to deal with an enraged Roxy was to be a little shit. Make a break for it! What have you done? <laughs> Did that little shit just kick me? <laughs> when all you want, you little twerps, you gotta come home eventually. Sorry! Investigate with Rillo. Okay. You should go do that. Sorry about that. Rillo gets overexcited sometimes. Solomon Valentine, current ward of and future successor to the Valentine fortune, huffed as he brushed off his pants. Down a complete nutter fools. One wonders if it's worth taking anything here seriously. By the way, I'm really sorry. No matter, how are you doing? Yeah. Yes, with all that business about your mother and whatnot. Oh, I'm getting by. Still no word from her at all? That's truly a shame. Shame! Grandmother's taken residence to keep house? Yeah. How is that going? Mostly stay out of each other's way. Make it sound like she's rarely at home. Not like that. She just has a lot to do. Hmm. She's still settling in and trying to figure out how to make ends meet. Indeed. I'll count your blessings. Better to have a caretaker who's rarely around in lieu of one who tries to compensate by smothering you with attention. That doesn't sound so bad. Trust me when I say, it's best to rely on yourself. Family has a way of creating more problems than they solve. Uh-oh. Not his day odd. Oh, man. Someone trifled a gesture toward the approaching heiress, Valentine. Speak of the devil. Uh, Don't wander off like that. Uh, I'm much too busy to be looking all over for you. Apologies, Aeris. I was just taking a stroll through town. Strolls are for commoners. 
your Valentine now. I want you to be present for the construction of the History Museum. The future of this town relies on its ability to remember our family's great past. Of course. Adios. No, I I'm gonna just go straight up talk to him. Bye, boy. Hold up a tick. Gotta in a hurry right now. Boy's got too much of his father in him. What's that even? Mean? I win. Little help. I am the champion. We were racing. Did that road get longer? Like anything ever changes around here. It seemed longer. You're just lightheaded from the run. You really need to pace yourself better next time. Not sure why I would take advice from second place. Has that sign always been there? But... Caution, electrified fence. No, that's definitely new. Creepy. How are we gonna get around an electric fence? Don't worry, I've got this. Bzz. Why did you do that? Always says you can figure out what the plan was when you're done. Great, what now? Well, I did my part and established that touching the fence is bad. I'm sure you can handle it from here. I'll supervise. From a safe distance. Okay. Aya! Oh, you're a genius. Yeah, I took out two with one can. And then ya! Yeah, yeah. I think that did it. Luca, you never fail to impress. Yeah, yeah. And now you are both captured and murdered. Came into view. No, Roll we're gonna hide it in the garbage can. can. Check it out. Dang, Rolo, you weren't exaggerating for once. Was there ever any doubt? This definitely needs investigating. I think two ace detectives are on the case. Roll an investigation check. This is bizarre. This is awesome. Rumble. Did you feel that? What, the excitement in the air? <laughs> Bet your butt I did. Really? You're gonna play in the puddle? Check out this puddle. That's not normal. And this hose. Don't step in that. Oh man, the door's locked. Locked. Try it. harder. No dice, it won't budge. Oh well. This dumpster's new, right? I bet it's got stuff in it. Can't really see what's in here. Who did all of this? My nose is itching. I think I smell some treasure. Are you sure that isn't the hazardous waste? Just help me get in. Hello. Be in my honor to throw you in the trash. Yay, you did it! Come on, lady luck. What's in there? Let's see. There's a squishy bag of squish. Uh, good inch of stagnant sludge. Your natural habitat. Wait, hold the phone? Hold two phones. Check these bad boys out. Are those walkie talkies? It's like Hank Atomic Communicators. Of course they are. Do these actually work? I don't know. Ground command to Hank Atomic. Hank, do you read me? This is Hank Atomic Ground Command. You're coming in five by five. How um how are your vital readouts, Hank? It's getting a little stuffy in here. Requesting assistance for evac. Help is on the way! What was that? Someone's coming, give me your hand. I'm trying, my hands are covered in squish. Let's get over, I'm coming in. What was that about? 
Uh, tell me you saw that. I don't know what I saw. It's coming back. Get down. It's oh, Darth no. Vader. Oh no! <laughs> Not on top of the kids. Is that a dead body? Yes. And you're going to see the hilarious part about this soon. Petrified under the weight of the bag. Ha! <laughs> Tell me that's not what I think it is. You know what separates run-of-the-mill detectives from ace detectives? A ridiculous hat. When the chips are down, ace detectives dig deeper for clues. Felt around at the large sack which burdened them. Aha! Uh -huh. tag from just within a small zipper opening in the bag. Some sort of badge or something. What's it say? to a faint shaft of light within the dumpster. Dr. Prescott, deep engineering. It's a name tag. I'm gonna throw away a bag full of slimy old name tags. I think it's just one name tag in a bag of something else. Oh, okay. I think we should make a break for it. Stay calm, this is no time to panic. I'm not panicking! You're panicking! Hello, calm down. You don't have to squeeze my hand so hard. Dude, I'm not holding your hand. We're messing around. What other slime-covered hand would be in here? Eee, Dr. Prescott! Ah! See? Funny. <laughs> <laughs> Getting to see the benefits of your run for our lives plan. Right, we've clearly established them faster than you, so I'll go first. Why not go together? Flame and chicky coop, Luca. Make sure the coast is clear. After I go, count to a hundred. You hear me yell, run. You don't hear me yell, run. Actually, either way, haul ass, haul ass, haul ass. Rollo, I'll give you credit. You sure found an eventful way to start our summer. That's what I do. Here goes nothing. Luca sat in the dark, tracking the sound of Rollo's footsteps as he ran. One, two, three. He pressed his ear to the dumpster wall, straining to hear Rollo's footsteps as they faded away. Fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. He tried not to think about the contents of the dumpster as he counted. Thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven. The thick stench made it hard to breathe. Screw it, that's long enough. Luca carefully lifted the lid and peered out. Nothing. No sign of Rollo. No sign of the man in the yellow suit. Time to haul ass. Luca clambered from the dumpster, stumbling to his knees. And? He was up like a shot and running, sprinting toward home as fast as he could. Beacon Pines flew by, blurred by the tears that welled up in his eyes. He wouldn't remember getting home at all that night. Throwing his front door open, storming up the stairs to his room and surrendering to sleep almost as abruptly as he hit his pillow. Must have been the toxic waste. Finding a friend. All right, that's where we're gonna morning, stop this one. It was quieter than usual at the breakfast table. Only the sound of yeah, silverware and chewing it. interrupted the awkward silence. I finished uh, jarring a mess of jam last night. Go ahead and keep going. We'll get through the conversation. Uh huh. So that'll need to get delivered into town today. Okay. So what did you and Rolo get up to yesterday? Oh, nothing interesting. Just a corpse. Don't Maybe answer it! Answer. Hello? Okay, calm down. Oh, of course it was the right thing to do. Start gathering, folks. I'll be right there. Are you sure there isn't anything you want to tell me about yesterday? Anything I want to tell you? Not really, we just sort of ran around a bit. Grand's brow furrowed. Uh-oh. She let out a long sigh. Her voice was quiet and even. I have to go take care of something. You have to stay in this house for the day. Under no circumstances are you to leave. What? If I'm not back by dinner, there's stew in the icebox. But... But nothing! You are to stay here, understand? Yeah. Say it. I'll stay here until you get back. She's going to go get that dance. Well, that was strange. Alright, that's where we'll wrap this one up.
quite the little horror game type has got going on. Mystery. An eerie electronic uh -oh. sound echoed from Luca's bedroom. Hello? Is anyone, anyone there? there? Okay, stop. Stop. Because we're already said we were going to wrap it up. So that will be all. We will pick this up next week. Leave a like, comment, subscribe. Hit that bell so you can see when we post new things. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Catch you on the next one. Bye. Bye.